855 400 Savage, 855 400 uh, this, uh, 400. I don't even know my number. Uh, my mind's on the cardiologist because they got to shave him under the uh, paw. Under the thing, I'm going to, I don't know what they do with that. Like, I put him in a harness. He's going to go crazy, this guy. He's like a wild animal, my dog. He doesn't like to be content, constrained. It's like a wild dog, this dog. 11 years old, does he know? They got to, like, uh, shave him under the armpits for the cardiogra cardiogram. You know, but for the grace of God, there go with I. I think of my father with the cardiogram before he died. The wires on him. Nobody wants to see. It's like you don't want to see a strong man get weak. I hate it when my father got sick. I never told you that story. Do you know that I resented him for getting sick? Would you believe that? We come from such strong-minded people. We come from such strong stock that we consider illness a weakness. <laughs> Would you believe this? Robert, I swear to God, I was told never to get sick, never complain about it, keep it to yourself, take an aspirin and leave me alone. And by the way, go to work at the same time and do your homework and go to school. I don't care what you have. I was raised that way. So you take a strong man who is your basically your ruler. He's your God. He gets a heart attack. He's laying in an oxygen tent and he's weak. I, I, I was mad at him. He disappointed me. He wasn't supposed to get sick. What do you know? You see, kids don't know that much about life. We're just humans. We all get sick and die. You understand that? It's a nice thought. Isn't it a nice Monday after a snowstorm? I mean, you'd rather do Courier and Ives right now. All the New Yorkers are like playing in the snow. Of course, all the evil ones are back out on the streets. The drugs are being sold. The prostitutes are hooking. Pickpockets are out. The thieves are back out. During the storm, it was probably great. If you had a pair of cross-country skis, it was probably safe to ski down Fifth Avenue. You could ski in areas you're, the police wouldn't even go to on Saturday. Now, by now, Saturday, it's all gone. The cars are plowed in, this and that. It's beautiful. Snow is gorgeous. It's so purifying. But the problem with it, it only comes down in one hue. That's the problem. What kind of racist God would create snow in only one hue? I think that's a topic that Hollywood has to come up with. That they should never, if they show snow, it cannot be in a single hue anymore. It has to be rainbow snow. I think what they have to do is make sure that if they show snow in a movie from now on, that they're not racist or homophobic. And that the snow should be put into a technicolor version in many colors. Because it may offend... Uh, I don't know who it might offend, but it'll offend somebody at Harvard. Or somebody at Columbia may get offended by the fact that snow in movies is white. I'll be back in a minute. Du, du hast, du hast oh. mich. Du, du hast, du hast mich. Forget about it. Sounds like they're tough and mean. There is no Germany anymore. Where are the German men? A bunch of wimps and degenerates took over Germany, and they put them in a corral. That's so, like in England. Take a look what's running England. The tough men who created, the descendants of the tough men who created England, they're put in a corral. If they march in the streets to defend England, they're called a racist by the, by the EU. The EU is the new Soviet Union, but okay, you don't know it because you didn't read it in the, uh, in the college newspaper. The EU is an emerging Soviet Union. Light. Okay? So there are no prison camps, comma, yet. There were no re-education camps except in everyday life, in every school, in every newspaper, in every university. Every broadcast is a re-education camp conducted by the deviants on the left. This is how smart they become. This is how they've done it. This is how they do it. And it's happening here, too. It's why I wrote Government Zero. It's what makes me get up in the morning. It's why I do it. Ben on KBET Radio. Ben, what's on your mind? Fire away. I think you were making a really good point that what's wrong with our country these days is not so much that we're what I mean what I'm trying to say is that we're is that we're weak and what you were talking about is that is about how you were raised you were raised to be strong in your story right I was not inherently strong I was inherently a kid I was shaped by a strong immigrant family who didn't have time nor an inclination to let me indulge my weaknesses, is the point. Exactly. And that's, I think, we need to be doing that more with our children that we're raising. Well, good luck. I mean, we had PE classes that were amazing. If I ever tell you what we had to do in our gym classes, your hair would stand up. I remember to this day, they had ropes hanging from the ceiling. Uh, you know, you had to climb in front of the whole class, the gym class. The boys had to climb the ropes hand over hand and foot over foot, right? and get to the ceiling and touch the ceiling. This came directly from military training in World War II. 
think of what I'm saying to you. As you're climbing the rope, believe me, I looked down and didn't. I, I wasn't. I was always afraid of heights. It was not easy for me, but I, I learned I had to do it, or I would be ashamed by being shamed in front of the whole group of boys. So I looked up instead of looking down, and I got to the ceiling, and then I came down the rope. The point is, they could not put ropes in a gym today because they'd be called this thing or that. They'd be d discriminating against this one. That one would cry. Then one would fall off a rope. The other one couldn't get up the rope, and he'd call a teacher. Then a teacher would call a, the cops. I mean, it's crazy. Right. Can you believe that we had that in PE class? Ropes in a gym? All right. I, I guess you can't believe it. No one can believe it. We had a rifle range. I'll tell you the story for the 50th time. Jamaica High School. When I was a kid, I went to Jamaica High School, city in, in, Queen, in Queens, New York. There was a rifle team. In the basement, there was a rifle range. They issued us guns. Pay attention, Hillary Clinton. They issued us boys rifles. They were, I think they were Ruger target rifles, I'm pretty sure. I forget the name of the gun. And we would shoot the guns. The men who taught us were Korean War vets, or if they were older, they were World War II veterans, grizzled old guys. They taught us to respect the weapon. They taught us how to load and unload a weapon, how to carry a weapon. Nobody shot themselves in the rifle range. Not one kid took the gun and ran upstairs shooting the gun. Nobody. Why is that? There were no drugs. The, the uh, doctors didn't yet dispense Adderall, Ritalin, Prozac, and other mind-bending drugs on the kids. They were not available. They didn't exist. They didn't exist. They existed in primitive forms as street drugs. But they didn't exist in, in the way now the boys are just uh, decimated from, from almost from birth. The point I'm making is I don't know if anyone can save the country. It's not so much a power. Well, God's going to come down and save America. The people have changed. Everyone wants to, a free ride, an easy ride. No one wants to work. Very few of us want to work. I mean, I'm motivated. I come from another time. I was created a long time ago. There's a lot of people who work hard. Many of you work hard. But that's not the norm in the country anymore. The, the concept of hard work is considered, if I'm not mistaken, they, they said you're not allowed to say hard work. I think the Black Lives Matter movement put out a whole missive against words you can't use in schools. One of them was hard work will get you what you want. Do you remember that? We read that whole list of things that is considered racist to say things like that, that you were insulting someone's race by saying hard work. I couldn't believe this. You say there's no re-education camps in America? Oh, my friends, there are re-education camps. They're called our public schools, universities, corporate uh uh, re-education camps, wherever you turn, re-education camps. So what are we going to do about it? I don't know. I can't change the world. I spent 21 years in the radio thus far, and I've done all I can do, speaking, writing, cajoling, lobbying, filibustering every day for hours on the radio. That's what I do. I filibuster three hours a day. God gave me the gift of the microphone. I use it to filibuster what I believe to be eternal truths, about God, family, country, hard work, etc. And I have some fun here and there. Sometimes it's not that much fun. And what effect has it had? We wind up the an the antithesis of everything that we believe in winds up ruining America. He has a name, and he gets away with it. Every day he does more damage to the country, and each day he does, I sit and wonder, how has he not stopped? Why don't they impeach him? When are they going to react to him? And he says, I'm going to squeeze every last ounce of change out of the time I have left. He is a very dangerous, sick puppy. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Monday, 
I'll go to clip one, Robert. That'll set off the hour. Clip one, Mr. Obama, the president of the United States of America. My number one priority is having a Democratic president succeed me. And uh, I think there's no doubt that, that given our history, mm-hmm. I want more women in politics generally. And I want my daughters to feel that there's nothing they can't do. Uh, no. I don't think that Democrats are going to vote for Hillary just because she's a woman. No. Uh, any more than they're going to vote for Bernie uh, just because uh, they agree with him on one particular issue. Mm. Then he goes on in clip two with an interview with the uh, government media complex outlet called Politico, which is owned lock, stock, and barrel wholeheartedly by the government. Listen to clip two. I am very proud of what we've gotten done over these last seven years. Oh, yeah. And I'm excited about what we can do this last year. Uh, you hear this? A, a singular regret for Lunatic. me is the fact that our body politic has become more polarized. Shock. The language, the spirit, spirit uh, has become yeah. meaner, meaner, meaner than meaner, meaner. Uh, when I came in. And yeah, nothing to do with it, though. This is a guy, a guy who sets a house Some of it fire, just has to do, do with, with some long-term trends that have accelerated uh-huh. in terms of how uh, the media is balkanized, gerrymandering. Uh, oh, you're full of garbage. You know, it's because uh, you're a polarizing, lying communist. Shut up. The man set the world on fire, and he says he doesn't know why there's polarization. He pitted everyone against everyone else. He set race relations back 50 years. Listen to number three, how he tries to skate out of this one. Listen. Race relations have deteriorated. They're terrible. I have to say, well, maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but Mm -hmm. they're not worse than they were after the Rodney King incident in L.A. And they're certainly not worse than they were back in the 50s or the 60s. But we forget. You know, I could say certain things about him right now that would be a waste of your time. If we had a, 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 a national dialogue that was based on facts, A, he wouldn't have been president. B, he would have been impeached before the second term. So what can you say about this? Listen to what he says in clip four. This is why I say to you, don't, don't think that if Trump becomes president, he's suddenly going to have a magic wand. Listen to four. What you discover when you're president is that the institutions and programs and things that you have put in place and built, if you've done a good job and you've done them sensibly, you know, in some cases may need tinkering with, can be improved. But if they're good things, they're harder to undo than you think. What he's saying is he's put poison pills in every one of his socialist, communist uh, doings which will make it very hard to undo. But what he doesn't know is that because he has been a demon in bypassing Congress and using his pen to get what he wants, the executive order, that means that when Donald Trump becomes president, as I hope he does, he will use the very same powers that have been put in place by Harry Reid and Barack Obama to not only undo, but to bring America back to its greatness. That opens up our number three on the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. Here are some other stories. It's like only in America. Texas 8th grader suspended for rescuing classmate during asthma attack. What? Yep. Washington Post. Anthony Ruelas watched what seemed like an eternity as his classmate wheezed and gagged in a desperate struggle to breathe. The girl told classmates that she was having an asthma attack. But her teacher refused to let anyone leave the classroom. Instead, the teacher emailed the school nurse and waited for a reply telling students to stay calm and remain in their seats. When the student having the asthma attack fell out of her chair, several minutes later, student Ruelas decided he couldn't take it anymore and took action. He said, we ain't got time to wait for no email from the nurse. A teacher's report quotes him as saying, according to Fox News Latino. And with that, the 15-year-old Gateway Middle School student carried his stricken classmate to the nurse's office, violating his teacher's orders. And for this... He is suspended in the new prison camp called America. Juveniles given life in prison can seek review, possibly parole, Supreme Court rules. Inmates who were sentenced to life imprisonment as juveniles should be able to file for a reevaluation and possibly attain parole. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled today in a 6-3 to ruling. The uh, high court ruled that a decision prohibiting minors from being sentenced to life in prison without parole should be retroactive to include all 
applicable cases. In delivering the opinion for the court, Justice Anthony Kennedy